Uh, good evening. This is the virtual board of selectmen meeting for Tuesday, April 7th. Uh, this time, all participants uh, will be muted and the uh, meeting will be closed. Actually, we're going to leave that open for a couple of minutes. Uh, as indicated uh, on tonight's agenda, uh, we will be opening this to uh, public comment. Uh, the email address that you need to use is at the top of the agenda, and it's uh, actually been on the uh, top of or on channel 18 for the last uh, five or 10 minutes. We have lined uh, speak, you must send an email. A uh, request to send to the email will be taken in the order that they were received. Those emails be, may be sent at any time. Mr. Ballantyne, the floor is yours. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I'd like to open the Harwich Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 7th, 2020. And uh, now I'll call to order and I'll take your roll call to do so. Uh, Steve? Here. Michael? Here. Don? Here. Ed? I do see a second caller. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I did a second caller, so I assume that was Ed. But... The star six had to be gone. Here. Ed's here, okay. We can barely hear you, Ed. And uh, I'm, of course, here, Larry. Uh, and before I start, my first uh, comment I'd like to make is, is that at the end of the last meeting, actually throughout the meeting, uh, we uh, gave our, uh, our thanks to uh, Megan and Joe, public safety, and the people that have really been helping us out and uh, coming to the town hall and doing a lot of work. We forgot, I forgot to uh, mention uh, Channel 18 folks, Jamie and Caleb, who uh, are the ones uh, video taping this. Uh, they're showing up at every meeting and doing a lot of work. Uh, I guess my only defense is, is that I'm not used to seeing Jamie even when we're there or Caleb because they're behind uh, their uh, uh, computer stuff, but our Certainly, they're doing yeoman's work and keeping this together and bring this out so everyone can watch it. So I did want to catch up and specifically uh, add those two uh, to our, our thanks for doing such a great job. I'd like uh, then to move to the uh, consent agenda. Uh, uh, Steve? Okay. Uh, consent agenda. We are going to... Um... Uh, delay uh, voting on the June 17th, June 24th, and July 15th, 2019 uh, minutes on the approval. Uh, there are evidently some questions about those minutes, and uh, there's going to be some uh, effort to look into those and, and make changes if they are necessary, and they'll come back to us quickly on that. So, so for this uh, meeting, we want to approve the minutes of March 19th, 2020. March 23rd, uh, 2020, March 26th, 2020, March 30th, 2020, and April the 1st, 2020. I'll second for discussion. Is there a sec there's three things, Larry, that one, uh, two on one of them, or if, if I could go on. Uh, the, the ninth, Please, the ninth go, go ahead. Meeting, uh, under the uh, new business, item H, it shouldn't read four zero. The roll call actually indicated four one. So okay. that that should just be a Scribner's change. Twenty third's fine. I was absent from the thirtieth, and so I couldn't have seconded the adjournment. Although I would have if we'd gone that far. Okay. So, are you comfortable with the uh, motion and second with the edits you suggested on the nineteenth? Uh, <laughs> I am. We have a uh, we we have an motion in a second, Michael. If I may, go ahead, please. Uh, on the March twenty sixth uh, minutes, it's uh, under Selectman's report. It's uh, Amy Usowski's name is quite wrong, so we need to change Amy's name. Okay. On July fifteenth, under no, A. We're not doing that. We're not doing the fifteenth. No. All right. Well, 
I may as well get my comment in there so Joe can pass it along to whoever's doing the minutes. Um, unless you want me to email it. I think, Michael, you can email because uh, 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 if you email it to me, uh, Don has some questions on those and uh, he's offered to review those again and provide his edits in the next couple of days so we can bring these back. Larry, uh, we that's what I correct. actually so, offered if you only hear it, yes. is that uh, if I could use Bob for like a half hour to just blow through the changes on some of these because they're really about fleshing out things that are completely missing. And then if Michael could send okay. me an email, we'll make sure that all of them are in there. Okay. And then uh, just Joe? Uh, just to let the board know that I have talked with Bob. Bob is prepared to work with Don or any other selectman on these minutes and then the minutes going forward, the process that we have in place. So, Don, Bob's ready to hear from you um, if you want to start that way. And then, of course, if any other selectman wants to. Okay. Thank you. I've never heard uh, anybody ready to hear from me. No. Uh, okay. Michael, you got another point? Last one was uh, uh, first. It said uh, under B, it said motion on contract. Um, I believe Ed made the motion, but there's no vote count. So it didn't say how we ended up voting. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, we'll have to review the uh, tape and, uh, and look at that. I believe it was four to one. That was on the uh, $11 million contract, and I believe Don voted no. Um, on the East Tower contract and the other four of us voted yes. I, I'd be fine with that change because that's true. Okay. You, that's my only changes other than July 15th. And, okay, and Michael, then just to uh, restate that, you'll send your comments to uh, uh, Don, or actually you can send them directly to Bob if you want. I'll send them to you, Larry, um, and that's just related okay. to the July 15th meeting. Okay, and then I'll be sure they, they get forwarded. All I'm right. Not a, I'm we not aware anyone else? Any, Larry, if I may, I'm not aware of any new process for minutes. So if there is a new process for minutes, if the board could get that outlined mm -hmm. to them, I'd appreciate it. We will, and I think Joe will speak to that. Uh, you want, Don? Yeah, uh, Michael, it, it's not a new process. I'm just, if he's going to uh, divvy this up to, to available staff that are, that are on furlough, that's all well and good, but I've made this comment before. Uh, it's not a question of typing or stenography. It's a question of accuracy. And I had offered to at least whoever it was to look them through so that we didn't we didn't go through the process of me voting against them or asking to delay them so we can get these things done. Okay, so uh, Joe. Uh, thank you. I was gonna update the board under uh, TA report on, um, on updates generally, but I do need to just put out there uh, for Selectman Howell, uh, you use the phrase furlough. I need to emphasize that no employees are presently furloughed as it's understood under labor laws. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, uh, this may be out of order for you, but uh, do you want to uh, just discuss in minutes and what, uh, what we're doing? Uh, sure, absolutely. So I believe um, uh, Danielle Delaney may have been the staff member that has provided the minutes that are in uh, this evening's packet. Um, working with you, Mr. Chairman, and then to staff, I had uh, asked the department heads um, uh, over the last uh, two uh, department head calls to identify staff that um, may have an availability and an ability to assist on minutes. Uh, the first, the primary focus obviously is with water selectment minutes to clean out the, um, the backlog and um, the process that we've come up with is the department heads were identifying available resources to Bob Lawton and Danielle Delaney. Um, Danielle would work with Bob to identify all the other minutes that, all the other meetings that require minutes to be produced. And then it was my understanding that Selectman Howell offered his uh, expertise to work uh, with staff. So I've asked Bob Lawton to reach out to, to Don to just tie back to uh, Don, Bob, Danielle, and all staff that are available. 
and we can begin that as early as tomorrow. I just want to emphasize that's not going to change anybody's position on editing minutes when they come in front of us. No. Michael, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Steve, I think your consent motion was for the minutes, correct? In the second? That's correct. So we need a, we have, we a, have motion, a uh, we have a motion in a second. So all we need uh, is a vote. Thank you. I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Ed, I'll start with you this time. Aye. Michael. Aye. Steve. Aye. Don. Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, Steve, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you for the next uh, items. Okay. Uh, under consent agenda B, vote to approve Class 2 used car dealer Goodson's Motor Cars, 10, 210 Queen Anne Road, Harwich. Second. Don, the second is it? Let me ask you if you may, uh, when you make the motion or second, just give us their name. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor? Uh, I can't do that, can I, after? Uh, Don, I'll start with you then. <laughs> Aye. Steve? Aye. Michael? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, Steve, back to you. Hey, under consent agenda, uh, consent agenda item C, vote to approve seasonal all liquor license, Phoenix Park, Inc., doing business as the Irish Pub, 126 Route 28, Harwich. With any pre-existing restrictions? With any pre-existing restrictions. Don, second. Okay. Any discussion? Take a roll call vote. Uh, I'll actually start with me this time. I'm an aye. Uh, Steve? Aye. Michael? Aye. Ed? Aye. Don? Aye. Thank you. So that passes unanimously. Uh, moving next to uh, new business. And uh, Joe, I'm going to turn this over to you, but let me just preface this by saying the reason this came, this discussion point came up is uh, we're in obviously an interesting time with a lot of things going on simultaneously or all at once. Or, and so, uh, you know, Joe and Megan have had discussions about what can we do uh, to uh, make clear as much as we can lines of communication so we're not going around in circles and can answer questions and get going. And I must add that also uh, applies to us as board selectmen too. We want to be careful in our communication with uh, departments and uh, uh, Joe and Megan do. So things get done, but we simplify the communication lines. And Joe, I'll then turn it over to you and, uh, and I guess Megan as well, but I'll start with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So you're, you're absolutely right. The, uh, the impetus for this was uh, in relation to COVID-19. Um, the public health crisis, uh, when the state went into state of emergency. And the reason why I emphasize that is, as I've said before, uh, Governor Baker made it clear on March 10th with his order that this was a public health crisis and therefore municipalities should be relying upon the direction of their public health directors. And I'm um, very, um, I don't wanna say thrilled or pleased or anything like that, but I think it's a very appropriate that the town of Harwich has done that because we're incredibly well served by our public health director. So we had agreed that we wanted this discussion tonight amongst the board to just um, advise the board as to the process we've been using and then through the board to the general public. And it, again, it is in terms of how we're trying to operate as a town as we navigate this unprecedented crisis. Um, so with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to defer to our primary contact with regard to COVID-19 crisis response, um, our public health director, Megan Eldridge, for her input at this time. Uh, Megan? Unmute your... Uh... All right. 
There we go. Much better. Thank you. Uh, so we're currently in a public health emergency. It's quite different than other kinds of states of emergencies that we've been in for blizzards and tornadoes and things like that. So it makes sense to include the health director in the decision-making process surrounding the operation of specific town functions. Because this pandemic is still evolving, even after many weeks, we have um, having a public health official guide the operations of the town, private businesses, as well as the general public are critical to the health and safety of everyone involved. The types of decisions I have been making in conjunction with Joe uh, revolve around the current crisis we're in. So they're all COVID-19 related and they have included closing town buildings to the public, activating remote work environments and public meetings like we're having now, restricting gatherings and events and closing non-essential businesses and really making sure we're all paying attention to the social distancing requirements. The decisions that these um, have been based on our orders and advisories through the federal and state government, specifically the departments of public health. Um, as the health director, I feel my role is to interpret these orders from the experts above me and enact changes locally that will protect the public health in the short and the long term of this pandemic. My job is essentially a crisis manager at this point. Um, I have access to critical COVID-19 health supplies through the strategic national stockpile um, that is through MEMA, um, and I'm in daily communication with the Department of Public Health for any policy changes and updates. And I am in regular contact with our contract nursing. I've been involved in the daily operation of all departments within the town to ensure social distancing and that proper personal protection is being carried out when needed. The safety of our staff is vital to the operation of our town government. Joe and I have been working under a unified command structure. It's something um, that we have in incident command where he's the acting interim town administrator for all regular town business, but also has the added duty of assisting in this public health emergency. In addition to the requirements of being the ATA, Joe is needed in carrying out messages and decisions that have been made jointly regarding COVID-19. Those decisions include planning for employees to work remotely as well as in their usual locations while practicing socially, social distancing and the logistics of having multiple buildings closed while still trying to provide the public with regular business options. I don't pretend to know how to run a town or make decisions that may impact the employees. So that's where the unified command comes in. Joe has been working tirelessly with me to plan for the worst while hoping for the best. We both have the best interests of the town in mind when making plans and decisions. And this health emergency is expected to evolve several more weeks before we can make any assessment on an end date or a plan to return to normal. So thanks for the time to explain how we've been operating and I am happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you, Megan. And I, I guess Bill, I'll come back to you first and then uh, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, really nothing more to add other than, I don't know that I heard Megan talk about her role in regard to public safety has been relying on her guidance um, every minute of every day. Um, I know I can speak for both chiefs and both deputies where um, Megan's influence, and if I, and I'm intending to embarrass her, if I've gotten this right, I believe she is the uh, association leader of the Cape and Islands Health Directors. Was I close on that one, Megan? That's uh, chair, chair, chairperson of the Cape and Islands Health There we go. Agent. So, so um, you know, that just speaks to her, her credentials uh, and the tremendous benefit that we have in Harwich. So, um, I, I appreciate the way she's presented this evening, um, struggled with the uh, agenda topic, but really we wanted to present this to the board to answer any questions or take any feedback from the board. And if the board thought it necessary for the board to affirm uh, the roles that we've just mapped out as it relates to the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus uh, unified incident command. Thank you, Jill. Uh, Megan, I hope they let you keep this position when it calms down and it's more fun. <laughs> I like working over there. It is fun. 
Okay. Uh, I actually don't think we need a vote, but uh, I think a consensus is enough that we uh, understand. But I'll uh, look forward to comments and questions. Larry? Yes. Don. Uh, Don, yes. I just want to state the obvious. I mean, I, I get how this is structured and everything, but it's kind of a collation of everything that's been going on over the last four weeks in terms of our comments at the end of the meeting. It's, it's even an understatement to call this a public health emergency because typically you'd have the ability to call on the state resources or the federal government or somebody else. Everybody's going through this. This is a generational uh, emergency. Uh, nobody who, if you weren't alive during the depression, I'm not sure that you could have a reference point about just how uh, universal this is. With that, I, I personally feel that these folks have been doing a terrific job, all the staff has, but I think as a board, and, uh, and I've been beating around the bush with this, as a board, we need to recognize that we're all in and what, whether anybody wants to buy the politics uh, nationally of this being uh, equated to a war footing or not, it really is. I mean, we are in a, in a major problem where there is nothing, that, uh, the pr first priority is this, the second priority is this, the third priority is this. If we got problems with other things, there'll be ample time for us to ramp up and talk about them. Uh, but this isn't really the appropriate time to do anything but give the public some uh, satisfaction that we're there for them, that the town uh, has a plan, that they've got people implementing a plan, and this Board of Selectmen support that plan. Uh, Again, we're going to have plenty of opportunity later on for anybody on the board who wants to say that we didn't do this and we should have done that. But right now is not the right moment. Right now is a moment to understand just how profound this uh, situation is and to say that we're, we're there for them. Yeah. Thank you, Don. Other questions, comments? Uh, hearing none. Uh, I read that as consensus that we uh, appreciate what you're doing and we'll, I guess, keep keeping on to use Larry. my grammar. Larry? Steve? Uh, yeah, just, just yes. um, not, not to be redundant, <laughs> um, but I think it, it may be important to be somewhat redundant in this time that we're in. Um, we should, and I think we have tonight, but I think we have all along, uh, affirm to everyone in this town that we have uh, very strong uh, support uh, offered toward both our town administrator and our uh, and Megan as well uh, relative to the roles that they play and relative to the jobs that they've done. I've had the opportunity to interact with them both over the last several weeks uh, in what is you know the most difficult time both personally and professionally for everyone. And I have to say, I've been very impressed, and their professionalism is just, you know, you can't ask for more out of these folks than what we've seen uh, to date. And I'm sure uh, that their performance will continue in the same fashion. Um, and as you said, I don't think we need a vote because I believe that everyone on this board, and, and I won't, I can't obviously speak for everyone, but I'm sure that everyone on this board wants to give their strongest support uh, to both of these individuals, as well as everyone else who works for the town, uh, you know, to make sure that we all come through this crisis in in, in a good fashion. So, you know, I know it's uh, I know it's redundant as to what uh, what Don said, but you know, sometimes you need to say it. Okay, thank you, Steve. You bet. Any other comments, discussion? If not. Uh, Thanks again, and we'll move on then to uh, old business, which is uh, unfortunately our weekly or every other day update. And uh, I guess, uh, uh, Joe, am I right to just hand this over to Megan or do you want to uh, comment? Uh, no, I, uh, first of all, appreciate the board, but I think you're right to send it right over to Megan for some sobering numbers for today. Megan, you're on. Okay, so the COVID update, um, like Joe said, it, it's not all that pleasant. Our state numbers um, grew to over 15,000 positive cases in Massachusetts, uh, 15,202. 
that is 1,365 new cases since yesterday. So that is um, a, a growing number every day. Uh, so we are still climbing up that steep curve right now. Um, something to sort of look forward to is seeing New York as our, um, our, our starting point where they were a few weeks ahead of us. Um, if we look at their numbers, we're starting to see potentially a flattening of the curve. So there's hope that if we follow their trajectory, we, we may be able to see that flattening in a few weeks as well. Um, <clears throat> there were 96 new deaths, unfortunately, related to COVID in the state. Um, that those numbers did reflect weekend numbers as well. So that wasn't just in 24 hours, that was since Friday afternoon. Um, in the county, we are up over 400. We're at 405 in Barnstable County. Um, that's up about 20 since yesterday. And over the last 24 hours, if, if my numbers are correct, um, there were three new deaths in the in Barnstable County. Um, Harwich numbers, we're going to have a discussion on Thursday about uh, whether or not the town as a whole wants to issue numbers on a daily, weekly basis. Um, but I can tell you that we had a few new cases over the weekend as well. Um, I wanted to talk publicly about a rumor um, that we have had a positive person working at one of our local grocery stores um, who had passed away. Um, I tried to track down the validity of that rumor. Obviously, I want to make sure that everything was done properly, but nothing was ever confirmed. So I didn't get any confirmation from the, the, the store, the state. Um, I didn't get any information as far as putting that rumor out there as a fact. So what I can tell you is that by contacting the store, they were able to tell me that they did have a employee that was um, for his own safety, he wanted to leave the store um, and has since passed away. That may be the root of the rumors. Um, but that employee had left the store on March 15th. So that means that he hadn't been in the store since March 15th. Um, so it kind of makes, um, I don't want to say a moot point, but the quarantine period is 14 days after you've been in contact with an infectious person. So whether he did or did not have COVID, is not um, something to worry about in this case because we would have um, had more cases as a result of that and we and we haven't so um, I do want to make a, a bit of a statement about employees at essential businesses that are open to the public um, we're going to see more and more cases in the state it is inevitable that one of these positive cases is going to have worked in some kind of public capacity, whether it's at a grocery store or the pharmacy or um, a convenience store. So it is um, part of the case investigation to find out where the person works um, as well as their close contacts. And um, it's up to the, the nurse who does the contact tracing and the investigation to decide whether or not that person's occupation is something to alert the local health department. Um, having worked at a, a store that's open to the public is definitely something that I would have been alerted to. Um, so um, if this were true, then um, I, I might not have been alerted because the, the infectious period was far longer than, than the last time he was at the store. Um, but the disease is known to spread from people with and without symptoms. So that means that the person ringing up your groceries who feels fine may be infected with COVID and not even know it um, and may never know it. It also means that the person handing you your coffee at the convenience store today might get sick tomorrow and have worked during an infectious period. 
it's for those reasons that staying home unless you need an essential item is important. It will limit your exposure to other people. Um, but we give guidance to stores that are open now. We have been in contact with restaurants that serve food and other types of convenience stores about social distancing and what to do if a employee becomes sick. So please have a little faith in the health department. We are out there talking with these people all the time, um, not physically out there, but on through email and telephone. Um, there's a there's a real possibility that people will come in contact with a person who has COVID during an infectious period. So social distancing, personal hygiene, everyone should be keeping six feet away from other people because you don't know if the person you're talking to at the grocery store today is going to get sick tomorrow. Um, everyone should be sanitizing their shopping carts and other frequently touched items and washing their hands as soon as they get home. Um, it will prevent the indirect spread of the disease. So having touched a dirty cart and you want to wash your hands before you put your hands on anything you're going to put in your mouth. Um, just being in a store where a person who is positive worked doesn't raise your risk of infection as long as you're practicing social distancing and using good personal hygiene. Um, to be a close contact, the VNA and the state say that you have to have been in close contact that's within six feet of someone for a prolonged period of time. And the VNA has indicated that that is 15 minutes. So if just passing by someone isn't going to raise a red flag, um, just being in a store with someone isn't going to um, make you a close contact. So good news, you can keep yourself healthy and safe by simple things, staying six feet away from each other. Um, if you have to get closer for payment options or other reasons, make it fast, um, make it quick. So, so you're not within close proximity of others for too long. Um, sanitizer, don't touch your face. The other thing I wanted to talk about is that now the CDC and the state are recommending masks to be worn while out in the public. So that's anyone, um, not just EMS, police, fire workers. It's uh, They're recommending that people when they go out shopping for their essential items, they should be wearing masks. It's a recommendation, not a requirement, but it's useful to prevent an asymptomatic person from unknowingly infecting others while out in public. Um, <clears throat> so that is the update on the rumors. Does anyone have questions about that? Because I do have a few more other updates I wanted to give you. Questions for Megan? I guess you're ready for some more updates then. Okay. <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom either. Um, so we have a update from the state. They have added on new laboratories that are able to do the testing. So it, it started out with just the state lab able to run COVID tests and now it's Quest and there's probably two dozen other labs now that can run the test which means faster turnaround times. And yesterday, the, the governor announced a drive-through testing, I think it's in Shrewsbury, or somewhere up near Boston that has a rapid test. And that is just like the flu test now where you get a nasal swab and you'll get a result within 10 to 15 minutes. So it's, it's pretty exciting in the world of public health, um, but it's only available in Massachusetts up at that one CVS and you do have to have um, a doctor's order as well as contact them for a appointment. So you can't just go up there and get this done. And they're trying to prioritize that for first responders. So they know right away whether they can go back to work or not. Um, and also they announced that a company has now offered a home test. I don't know much about it. But I just want to warn people that if they're being sold a home test to make sure that it is FDA approved. Um, 
Otherwise, you're just going to get a, either a false sense of security or a false sense of alarm if it's not accurate. And then the other, the last thing I have is that the Bronx Zoo had the tiger um, positive. And I wanted to mention that um, there have been reports saying that humans can give the virus to animals. In China, there were some dogs, some pet dogs that were um, tested and found to be positive. So there isn't any evidence that um, the animals can transmit the disease to humans this way, but um, it's still under investigation. So it's, it's an interesting piece of information, but yeah. it doesn't really glean any any facts at this point. And that's it. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, that's interesting, but I don't know where it leads since we read all the articles about. Megan, I do have a question. And uh, just before the tonight's meeting, I uh, was texted a uh, picture, uh, I think, of Red River Beach, uh, mm -hmm. in which the parking lot was uh, not full, but a lot of cars. And uh, the uh, sense is there might be more activity than what we would uh, agree should be proper. Do uh, you have any uh, comments? I do. If that's a problem, uh, do we need to have a few more? We've talked about that. Um, we've had conversations with the rec director, Eric, and have had um, the police during one of their regular rounds make rounds to some of the public areas, beaches and parks like that to make sure people are adhering to social distancing. Um, and the general consensus is that people are at the beaches. Most of them are in their cars. Um, so they're still practicing their own social distancing yeah. and that we haven't seen any crowds at the beaches or the parks. Um, it, it may be, it may come to us having to close things down if people aren't strictly adhering to that, no gathering, social distancing. Um, I've been trying to keep recreation areas as open as we can because we do need exercise. It's, it's good for your mental health. And um, But if it comes down to people not adhering to the six foot rule, then we, we may have to close things. I think our hope is that people will listen so we can continue to get out and exercise and enjoy where we are. Mm -hmm. Larry, so, it's thank all of it. I, had a quick, no, I had a quick question for Megan. Megan, uh, just before our meeting started, I saw an article come across the uh, wire that um, uh, indicated that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is going to institute a program hiring a thousand new people. Um, and I think it relates to the contact tracing that you referred to earlier. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Um, these are volunteers through public health schools. So they're students um, or, or some of them are uh, public health professionals that are volunteering their time. And they're being trained by the uh, Department of Public Health to do contact tracing or to support local boards of health that may not have any help. So there are a few towns on the Cape that don't have a contracted nursing agency like the VNA that we have. So they are doing all of their contact tracing by themselves or with the support of Barnstable County. Um, but there are quite a few towns throughout the Commonwealth that don't have anyone. Um, there are some towns that don't actually have a health department. They have a board of health that they share between towns. Um, so most of those volunteers are going to assist the most needy towns, but you're right, they are available um, when, if, when our VNA gets overwhelmed with cases where they can't keep up with the contact tracing, we can tap into a volunteer or two to, to help us with that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's great. Um, I'd also say um, uh, to your point about the uh, police, uh, uh, going through the parking lots of the beaches. They, I, I have witnessed that um, more so than, you know, what you normally see uh, at any given time. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I, I think they're, they're trying to make sure that we're doing an effective job of keeping people from congregating in the parking lots. My experience, uh, and I'm on, on the beach a fair amount, um, 
uh, people are trying, in fact, they're not doing six feet, they're doing 20 feet. They tend to walk around you. So hopefully that continues that way. So. Yeah, we're trying to, to do that with beaches and parks. We've, we've closed some of the tennis courts and the other places where kids or, or adults go and, and play games together. And you think, oh, I'm playing tennis and I'm across the court from you. But those people are within that space touching the, the gates and the nets and things like that. Yeah. So we're trying to do what we can there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Don, you had any other question? Yeah, this seems to be, I was going to wait until the end, but this is a really appropriate moment to, to say this because of what Megan said in the points that you, Larry, and you, Steve, made. Uh, I was on the phone this afternoon uh, with somebody who serves on a town board, and they got a neighbor that's totally convinced that this is bogus, uh, was inviting her over to play cards. Uh, it's, this is more universal than River or Beach. And there's a couple of models you can look at. I know there's a bunch of people that came down to the Cape because they figured that they could escape to their uh, bunker here uh, and that everything was going to be fine and that there, it's not really a big problem. Uh, but for those of us who are old enough to remember this, I mean, we used to go through drills and hide under our desk for the uh, possibility of a nuclear war that never came. Uh, but the other model that's probably much more appropriate here is when the when the gates go down and the bells start going off for the railroad crossing, most of the people who disregard that uh, are playing Russian roulette and they eventually wind up getting uh, a certain percentage of them getting hit by a train because they don't believe the gates telling them the truth. Uh, what I really wanted to do is make the point to the public in general is it's not a game. It's not something arcane that you're watching on TV where the numbers keep going up in New York City, but boy, are we happy that we're here on Cape Cod and where there's nothing going on. It, it's it, it's an algorithm. I mean, uh, one becomes two, becomes four, becomes 16. It just keeps getting bigger. And you don't know because of the two week lag period of time, just where that's happening. And Megan made the point about asymptomatic transmission. Yeah, everybody's got to get with it here. I mean, it is a problem hanging out with your cousins because they're out of school and we're out of school or going to your next door neighbor to entertain because, well, that's pretty close to me and I don't, I don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. If they went to the stores, Megan made the point, there's a real possibility that somebody that doesn't look like they have it could transmit it, but you won't even know that for a couple of weeks. So please listen to what Megan and Joe are telling you. It's real. It's not an exercise. We're not practicing something. It, it literally can save lives. I mean, I, I, I'm passionate about this because I've had lung problems since I was four. I'm really up there in the uh, risk category. I don't want anybody to needlessly go through getting this because they thought it was just something that was going on somewhere else. Please listen to these people. Okay. Thank you, Don. Any other comments or questions for Megan? If not, as usual, Megan, great job, and we'll hear from you, I guess, again in a couple of days. Larry? Uh, who's Ed? Yes. Larry. Yeah. Uh, Ed, Megan, go ahead. Uh, if somebody becomes aware that there's a group in town or in their neighborhood that seems to be gathering and doing so really uh, sort of flagrantly violating uh, the um, social distancing norms that we are all trying to obey. Uh, and, and any suggestion of what they should do? Uh, well, at first, first, I always find it easiest to give a call or, or have a conversation with someone about it. Um, mm -hmm. But if that doesn't work, then the police are ready, willing and able to break up any gatherings that are happening. Um, education, I think, is the the best way to go at first, but if that still isn't working, you can contact the police to have have their assistance. Um, but if you wanted to have people 
maybe email the health department with a complaint, we can look into maybe making phone calls or sending letters at first. And then if that doesn't have help, we can physically make a presence there and talk to people individually. Okay, thank you. There, you know, yeah. there, there, you know, you know, there was one, one instance that was brought to my attention and I'm knowing the neighborhood dynamics that it's in. It's not a situation where the person would really feel comfortable um, uh, uh, having a conversation with, with the person. It, mm -hmm. Uh, it's not your friendly neighborhood in some ways, so um, I'll, I'll uh, pass that along to them. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Any other comments, questions? If not, uh, Scott, I think we'll go now to uh, to your direction and see if we have emails people want to uh, participate. Sure, Larry. Uh, at this point, I have no one uh, that's expressed interest in uh, speaking tonight. So, at your discretion, we can give a, a few more minutes and we can carry on. I think what I would like to do is uh, carry on with the uh, uh, town administrator's report. And if someone calls in, we'll uh, contact you. We can interrupt and let them contribute. But rather than just uh, have dead space, We'll go on with the agenda. Does that, does that work for you, Scott? Understood. Yes, sir. Uh, Joe, uh, Tom, Ministry Report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only other thing I had to add, uh, because we had the discussion about minutes for boards, is I um, just wanted to be, I'm glad to be able to report out that I met with uh, DPW Director yesterday and was able to um, see for myself the, uh, the manner in which they've reconfigured the recycling center the uh, reaction and the uh, turnout was brisk, um, but it's done in such a way that it is not possible to um, to break the social distancing, which was great. So they've set it up perfectly where um, you come up uh, individually in your automobile, you take care of your items, put it into the bin and drive away, then the next person comes up. And uh, as I said, the uh, the reaction from the public has been very positive. There's been um, significant activity there. So um, it's good to have that essential service uh, back online in this manner. And it's helpful that we uh, can identify successful ways to get back into operations. Other than that, um, nothing else to report. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I hate to admit that I'm a, a, such a uh, live by habit so much, but a couple of days ago I was there and the recycling center was closed. And honestly, God, I have stood there for a few minutes trying to figure out what my next step was before I figured out I could just, I could dump it as in the landfill. So I was a sole mover. Let's move next to uh, Selectman's, re uh, Selectman's reports then while we're giving college a chance. But Michael, I'll start with you. Thanks, Larry. I, I actually, I just would like some clarification. I'm, I'm still processing what Don said at the uh, beginning of the meeting about priorities. Uh, and certainly priority number one would be COVID-19 and, and what we're doing. I do think as elected officials, as I've mentioned in the past, that we do still have a town to operate regardless of what Don's opinion may be. But I'd like to get some um, guidance, I guess, from, from you as the chair as to what what that means. I, I, I heard Stephen Ford's comments and I, I think that was more directed to um, recognizing that this is priority number one, but I haven't heard the rest of the board say yet that we shouldn't be doing normal business. And I do notice on Thursday's agenda that we're taking up the uh, town administrator uh, search committee. Um, Norm's coming to do a, uh, a talk on that. So I guess direction from you on what we should bring forward last week or two weeks ago, uh, I brought up some things that uh, pertain to law and some things that um, we've been waiting for, uh, as well as is trying to learn why we have overtime at the dump at such a critical time when we're trying to save money. And I've not heard word one about that yet. And, and Joe, I'm not um, 
give you a hard time about that. That was not directed at you. That was directed to the chair who I emailed. Um, and, and just so that we're clear, um, I'm asking for the chair to get back to me on that. Uh, nobody else and uh, anyone else that wants to know about my comments or what I did or didn't say tonight could read them on Howard Old Timers later. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michael. I, I've, uh, I, I'll have a chance tomorrow to respond to a couple of those questions. I got tied up today. I have the information, so I want to respond to that. Uh, you're right. This is our priority, but we have to worry about uh, continuing other activities. Uh, we've talked about the mess. We also are going to have to, in the near future, start, uh, even though it's a little further down the road of talking about how we're uh, going to proceed when we do have a town meeting. I gather we probably want to restrict the uh, number of articles to only essential ones if we have it in late June. We do have other activities. And so uh, I'll go through and uh, try to put those as uh, actions that we need to take care of, uh, remembering that way the top priority, as Joe Nagan said, is getting us through here. So I, I take care of those comments and we have to uh, put that in order. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's an important point because we are still have to keep going. Uh, let's see, Don, Selectman's reports. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, but I am now. Uh, I'm, I, I want to be explicit. I can distill it into one sentence. If it's something that can wait, it should wait. This thing occupies, it's taking all the oxygen out of the room. We still have a town meeting to go over and I don't see the benefit of recriminating over something that might've happened three or four months ago if we have the ability to deal with it uh, moving forward. That's what I meant. If something is a violation of law, yeah, sure. We should be talking about that. But if it, if it has something to do about, I don't think this person should have gotten that job or anything, I am dead set against that. The public needs to know that we're focused. And the only way we can show them that is by being focused. Larry, if I may. Uh, yes, and then I'll comment. I just wanted to thank Don for uh, clarifying that. And um, it's nice to see that he would look at facts. Well, to end this, uh, I'll follow up with uh, my thoughts and items that we should uh, uh, take on as the next uh, several weeks as we move forward. Steve? Uh, I think I've said enough this evening, thank you. Okay, Ed? So Mr. Chairman, it appears that Ed had dropped off at 722. Okay, excuse me, I missed that. Uh, Scott, I think uh, since no one's uh, Emailed or call, we'll consider it going to be over. Agreed. Thank you. Now, thanks. To, and Scott, as usual, thanks very much for putting this together and being here to uh, uh, helping us out. If there's nothing else, I have no, nothing for me for a selection report. If nothing else, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Don, move to adjourn. Steve? Second. 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 Sorry. Steve, we'll take a vote then. Aye. Steve? Aye. Aye. Michael? Aye. Uh, Michael, I probably talked when I shouldn't have. A uh, vote to adjourn? I think we've lost Michael. Uh, Don? Uh, he said aye. He said aye. He said aye. Okay. I was talking over him, I guess. Don? I haven't changed my mind. I. Right. Okay. Uh, and that dropped off. So I'm and I, and we'll call me to adjourn, and we'll uh, we'll do this again on uh, Thursday. And uh, I guess Megan and Joe will keep our fingers crossed that uh, we actually have. Maybe we'll be lucky. And we've and we've re and we've reached the peak. And we'll start seeing things go uh, go down a bit. But good night, all. Thank you, Larry. Oh. This conference is no longer.